Hey guys, what's up? My name is Edgar Bajor. We're jumping back into Ghost of Tsushima. This time we're actually getting started on the actual meat and uh, the meat of the game plus uh, here. So we're going to be picking up where we left off last time. Where we have uh, Jin riding around his horse through the island of Tsushima. Uh, some cool features about New Game Plus include all our skills carry over, all our equipment carries over. Uh, we do have all the armor sets that we would have, uh, how we ended the game. We have all our swords, all the skins, uh, all our skill points, all the techniques, samurai techniques we've learned do carry over. So what is the actual point of doing New Game Plus? Well, if you want to replay the story of the game, which is fantastic, you can. There's only two trophies to unlock. It does not sound like it's that much, I know. But I'm going to be honest with you guys, this game was phenomenal from start to finish. And a lot of people who don't have uh, PlayStation 4s, like if they're a PC gamer, or if you're an Xbox gamer, you're not going to have had a chance to really experience this game. And the likelihood of this game ever coming to another console, it's never going to Xbox, it's never going to Nintendo. It, it might come to PC three, four years later, uh, since we saw Horizon Zero Dawn uh, uh, go to PC, as well as Death Stranding, which came out a lot earlier uh, as a whole on PC. So that is a possibility. Right now, uh, we're kind of picking up where we left off here. This is an old trading post right now, and throughout the game, this looks like a, a Mongol stronghold. So throughout the game, uh, we're going to be able to go through what they call Mongol strongholds. Uh, this is how we learn our new uh, sword stances that we're going to unlock throughout the game. And, you know, when we play through this, we're going to be able to unlock these new sword stances, which are very effective against certain types of enemies. So the fact that we're just kind of walking right in here, obviously, uh, at this point in the game, since it's the very beginning of the game, we are going to be able to kind of just wander around. We have this this map here. Obviously, we can't go all around the map. Is the the, the, the uh, island of Tsushima, which is off the coast of you know mainland Japan, is kind of cut into three different sections here. Uh, obviously, that's how the game is kind of segment. We have chapter one, chapter two, chapter three. Uh, the game is cut up in three chapters. It is a pretty decent long game. Uh, throughout the games entire runtime there's going to be lots of things we can you see here's the map we're going to go in here uh these are our weapons and accessories we can change our horse's saddle which will change a lot of things here we're going to make sure it's not such a big of a deal we get that by collecting certain items uh let's see so we have our sword here we can still upgrade that which is new uh we have charms uh and charms are going to give us special abilities uh not special abilities they're going to enhance our stats and stuff like that so you see me get all these different items. Those are our resources that we collect that we can use to essentially upgrade our equipment. Uh, artifacts, those are collect these are all the collectibles we have throughout the game. We don't have to actually get them into a game plus because we got them all on, you know, previous pl game play, a uh, previous playthrough. We did, uh, we don't have to do it, right? But we're gonna, you know, we're gonna try. Uh, it's, it, it, it does take up time. It adds a lot of time to the game. Uh, there are Shinto shrines. There are fox dens. Uh, we have a whole bunch of things that we can do throughout the game, which is typical of an open world title, in order to fully get 100% of the game. But right now, our big focus is going to be completing the story. We're going to experience the story. Uh, these Mongol strongholds we can go through throughout the game. They'll unlock portions of the map. Of course, we finish a chapter. You know, we can go back and do anything after, you know, we finish the game, we'll have free roam in order to go through the game uh, as well after you finish it. So if you if you actually play the game and you feel like you missed something, uh, you can always go back and find it. The map will give you pretty much everything you need. Uh, you unlock the map, the Fog of War is what they call it, that kind of blocks off the map. It, it, it is visible. As you clear areas, you can run through areas, as well as you can also, you know, do all the strongholds to unlock chunks of maps. So pull up the question marks, which is your unlockable items. Uh, like we said, there there are haikus, Shinto shrines, uh, you know, fox dens. Uh, we also have hot springs as well. All these things are going to be able to do things for you in the game. Hot springs will increase your health. Uh, the haikus will, you know, give you headbands, which is an equipment. It doesn't really do so much, too much, it's more of a visual thing. The Shinto shrines will give you charms. A lot of things uh, throughout the game, little collectibles. Now, obviously, having done all that stuff, having max health, 
having max resolve going into this. It's not something that we're gonna be able to, we could do them and it won't really benefit us as much. This is what we're gonna see. Who are you? So, this guy, Baku the Voiceless, Goodbye. is going to be one of our big people that we're going to have to go through, go to at one point throughout New Game Plus. Now, when I say that is, he's going to sell new armor dies, dies for our equipment and stuff like that. And what that means is the things that we purchase from him are not purchasable in your first game. So, what we're going to have to do is we're going to have to go through the game, progress through the story, we get rewards. We're not going to get the same rewards when we play through the story the second time because of the fact that, well... You know, you get these rewards. You already did it all. In New Game Plus, you're going to have new rewards, which are going to be these ghost flowers, which we trade in for an increase in, uh, you know, new dyes and stuff like this. So the, we, we found that one is the haiku. And essentially, we look around here, you see specific places, and we put together a haiku, and we're going to get a headband. And there's like 15 or so scattered throughout the world, the game's map. Uh, there was a trophy associated to uh, getting as much of the uh, additional content, these, these like, locations. A golden temple. Submerged deep in nature's shade. Sturdy do we stand. And if that haiku made no sense to you, that's fine, because the haikus don't have to actually make sense. If you're playing through the game and you're trying to figure out, hey, let me get the, the haikus and do all that stuff, then it doesn't have to make sense. As you see on the map, we have certain things popping up that we can get to. Uh, those are the stories that we just picked there. This is Yuna's story. Throughout the game, our characters, uh, certain characters will have stories. So we have side quests, which are consider considered Tales of Tsushima. Uh, we have certain characters have their own tales. So, for example, Yuna, she'll have quests as well. Uh, there'll be other characters that have quests as well. On top of that, you have the main stories, which are, you know, Jin's journey. And then, of course, you have other, I think, like, legendary tales as well. Uh, if you're playing through this the first time, there are trophies associated to them all. Um, completing each character's side stories, as well as the main story, as well as doing all the quests. Uh, those are actual uh, quests. Now, if you guys are wondering, slide to Nookie here. Uh, let's see if we can run do that here. Uh, there is a trophy in this game in which you actually make your character look like uh, Sly Cooper. To the best of your ability, obviously, this game is not going to be something we can actually like actually accomplish because Sly Cooper is an anthropomorphic raccoon. Um, just saying. But there is an armor set that you have to unlock at some point throughout the game, and it, it's, it's a bit of a pain in the ass to get. Uh, a lot of the armor here is visual. Uh, there isn't actually any real hardcore repercussions in the game uh, for us to dress our character a certain way. There's obviously certain armor sets we like. I don't really like the masks that much. Uh, that That's something that really kind of bothers me. I really wish the masks looked a bit better here. I'm going to put this last thing together here. Was it, was it Gosaku's armor? Yes, I'm pretty sure it was. So we got to change the color here. There we go. And that would pop the Sly Cooper trophy. In case you didn't have it, if you were playing the game, you get Kosako's armor is a legendary side quest. Uh, the Kama, which is the, not the Kama, the sword we get at one point throughout the game, and of course the the wrap and the, the headband you get throughout the game as well. Uh, they're also unlockables. You can get just kind of exploring the map and completing quests. So, I mean, like I said, you get a lot of stuff throughout the game. Uh, just by doing things. It's actually not that uh, hard, to say the least. But, you know, there is a certain armor set that I like to keep. I, 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 just like with our uh, playthrough for Spider-Man, we do change our uh, costumes a lot. And, you know, if a game has a lot of good visual equipment that just really just changes visuals, uh, I'm all for it. Now, obviously, what we just did, we don't have that unlocked. We wouldn't have that unlocked in our first play through the assassination uh, option here. Just playing the game how we would feel like we would play the game. 
uh, throughout the game, obviously, we're going to see uh, Jin kind of question uh, the combination of his his code as a samurai. They're very honor bound uh, to follow that specific code and not really break the code as much. But you will see eventually, obviously, there's, he's going to have to make a lot of questionable decisions in order uh, to save his people. And we got to equip these. Uh, these things, the right things. So, you know, throughout the game, like I said, we get a lot of these cool things. Uh, it's not mandatory to make sure you get every little piece of, uh, they call it vanity gear. We don't have to make sure we get all of it because getting all the vanity gear, that's going to take a lot of time. Uh, but one thing is there are trophies associated with certain things. If we get a certain amount of vanity gear, that's all you need to worry about. So, like I said in a previous video, uh, mainline PlayStation titles, uh, they've made it pretty uh, easier, instead of being like ridiculously hard to get a uh, platinum trophy in a PlayStation game uh, from being like a 10 out of 10, they made it like a 5 out of 10 or lower. A lot of the games, yeah, they're frustrating. Like uh, Last of Us Part 2 was frustrating where you pretty much had to play the game a whole second time in order to get the platinum trophy uh, but it wasn't like played on ultra hard so it, it really encourages people to actually play the game over and over again I mean I would just equip the ghost armor uh, which we unlock later in the game that is my favorite armor of the game that's the armor you see in the trailers and you know on the box art it is fully upgraded no it's not fully upgraded because they added a level of upgrade uh, to the armor uh, in New Game Plus. So right now, we can do a standoff if we want to, or we can be doing what they really just kind of forgot about doing in Assassin's Creed titles, and that's just sneaking around right now. So we're going to kind of play the game however we would feel would be the best way to play the game. Uh, remember, this is New Game Plus. The fun part about New Game Plus is that we have all our equipment, uh, all, everything, everything we had at the end of our first playthrough, we have available to us in New Game Plus, which is fantastic uh, that we're able to do this right away instead of having to really kind of have to go all the way through the entire game as if we just opened it and just installed it on our hard drive and just kind of go through it all. And that's 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 one thing I love about when a oh, game adds fight. New Game Plus, you kind of know what you're doing so you can just go through it and have fun with it. And Usually a lot of games these days do New Game Plus. As you can see, we totally messed up that standoff when we have like no health left. But a lot of games do New Game Plus as a whole, and that's fantastic. And you know, you gotta. I'm not saying you make it so that someone has a reward for playing New Game Plus with trophies and everything like that. But like being able to just go back and play a game if you love it a certain way again, you know, it really does add a whole new level. Like I said, we did mess up that standoff. And you get punished for that. But like I said, taking down enemies rebuilds our resolve so we can take hits like that. And it looks like this is an area where we're at right now where defeating the Mongol leaders would give us uh, clearing our fog of war, which gives us more of a space on the map. But it'll also, at the same point in time, will give us a skill points, not skill points per se, but the ability to see more of the map. Uh, the game does have that like progression, kind of like you know you would have in Assassin's Creed or Infamous or The Witcher 3, where you get skill points and stuff like that as you progress through the game, and you put that in your skill tree. There are like three different skill trees. You have your Samurais, your um, Ghost skills, you have Stance skills. And as we progress through the game, we're going to be able to do all of that fun stuff. It's going to be a lot of fun uh, to do that in your first playthrough. The second playthrough, you don't have to worry about that at all. Everything's maxed out. Which is fantastic. We don't have to worry about that. We just worry about uh, progressing through the story, doing as much of the side quests uh, as we can. Because there are some side quests that are really just kind of stupid. Hey, not stupid per se, but there are ones that are glitchy. Now that's pretty badass, you get that later on in the game, you can't do that in the beginning of the game. We just literally just decapitated that Mongol guy. And the cool thing about the ghost armor is it does scare enemies. Enemies are terrified uh, when you make a kill, especially when you do a slaughter kill like that, they're going to run away. Which is amazing because like they're like, oh crap, we're screwed here. Oh. 
Another thing we have, you see in the bottom right-hand corner, we have that little mask with the where it's kind of shaking so we hit the two trigger buttons. If we hit the tr trigger buttons, we go into, I guess it's like ghost mode or something like that. Uh, pretty much what it's going to do, we're going to see it later on in the game, obviously. Uh, we're going to be able to just go on a ramp at killing spree, <laughs> which is kind of funny that we say it. But right now, we're going to kind of wander around aimlessly, and we're gonna actually going to pick up our first actual main storyline here. And it's going to be helping out Yuna here, so we got to get to her first. And the cool thing is about this game is, yeah, we can ride a horse. We can also run around like a crazy person as well. There's a whole bunch of things we can do throughout this game uh, in order to traverse. There's also, you know, fast travel, which will be unlocked after we open up more of the map. Now, we don't want to do fast travel because right now we want to open up as much of the map as possible. We don't want to miss things. Jin, you found me. You handle that well. I should have heard him coming. Let myself get distracted. These people saw Mongols marching prisoners upriver. They had a blacksmith with them. Your brother? Sounds like it. They were taking him to a camp near the Canada Inlet. I know the place. Did you find any samurai to free your uncle? Not yet, but I'm still searching. I'm sure you'll find someone soon. <laughs> Taka can help you, after we save him. Hard to believe I might see him soon. He's lucky to have you. He might disagree. That's what siblings are for. What about you? Any brothers or sisters? Lord Shimura is my only family. What will you do when he's free? Take a breath. Because then I'll know there's hope for our island. You feel that strongly? I've watched him win victory against impossible odds. And after your brother is free, what then? Honestly, I haven't had time to think about it. You're riding well. How are your wounds? Mostly healed. Your bandages did the trick share much about how you feel, do you? I suppose you're right. My uncle taught me that a samurai masters his emotions, like you master a horse, or a blade. That's a hard way to live. It's not supposed to be easy. So a cool feature about the game is that every kind of mission, so to speak, is kind of set up in like sort of like a cinematic way to an extent. I'm not saying it's exactly cinematic, but it kind of like it's like an episode of like a TV series or something like that. If we're looking at it from that perspective, which is a fantastic way uh, that the developers really tell their story that they want to tell, and each story has its own, is like a, its own sub mission and stuff like that as opposed to it all being part of one big thing. So for example, the side quests are their own thing. They don't add necessarily add to the story, but the characters have their own stories, which are kind of like little mini episodic content. Some of the, 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 the missions, quests, whatever you want to call them, range from being short, like five, 10 minutes, to a, spot up ahead that overlooks the river. Give us a, a little bit longer, which is like 10, 15, 20 minutes. Some of them are longer. This is kind of like in mid range. This is on the longer end, uh, because it's one of the first ones we're doing here. I'm not entirely sure what we're doing here. Uh, the game does, like I said, the HUD having nothing on there for most of the time really gives it that more of that, more of that cinematic feel, so to speak. I'm trying to figure out what the button is to kind of give us the winds, to give us the idea, instead of constantly having to pull up on the touchpad the, the map. I'm not sure if we're supposed to go down here or not, but we're going to try. And it does tell us it's about 90 meters away, so we could be going the right way, we could be going the wrong way. We're probably going the right way, right, though, let's be honest here. And much like games like yes, Assassin's can. Creed Tough to get inside. Uh, and Breath of the Wild, we can pretty much climb almost everything. There has to be a way in. Let's look and in. we are in the wrong spot. You see the wind's telling us to go over here. So we get that here. So we're going to go over here real quick. We need to reach Taka without putting him in danger. We'll find a safe approach. You could scare the rocks on that side. 
If they're loose, they might give way. Alert the guards. Defenses in back are formidable. The front wall there is still under construction. Could be a way in. We can look for a gap in the front wall. Slip inside. And cut down the Mongols where they stand. If something goes wrong, they'll kill the prisoners. I've seen them do it. We have to go in quietly. Like thieves. What's wrong with that? Before the samurai, this island was ruled by criminals. We changed that by creating order and delivering justice in the open. We live by a code of honor. And sometimes we die by it. Warriors like my father, who just wanted to give us a safer home. I want the same thing, but we have to fight back. I promised my uncle I'd never break our code. Then bend it. To save my family. And what's left of yours. Let's get a closer look. See what we're up against. We should wait until it gets darker. Let's move. So right now we have to find our way into this camp here. And the cool thing about missions like this is it really gives us an idea of having a survey of the area to find where we're supposed to go. And it does interest bring up like conversation between our characters here, uh, Yuna and Jin. So right now we gotta kinda figure out the Taka. He's been through a lot, even before the invasion. But you took care of him. Someone had to. He hated when I stole. But it was that or star. I didn't have a choice. I didn't choose to be a samurai either. But going against my instincts. My code. It's better than getting wiped out by the Mongols. We have to fight back. Any way we can. So right now we're going to sneak in here. And this is where we kind of see that the idea of, you know, Jin kind of fighting back against uh, having to break his code to flex it a bit, so to speak. Which is a very interesting concept. The whole game uh, pretty much circles around that, that morality that Jin has. If they see us, they'll kill the prisoners. Then we better stay quiet. Think, Jin. The bear's running with a limp. Your arrow wounded him. This is when a beast is most dangerous. Remain alert. Yes, Uncle. Keep after him. I didn't think bears lived here. They don't. But the fighting in Yarikawa drove some this way. So it's the rebels' fault. We should feed them to this bear as punishment. We are not barbarians, Jin. The bear stumbled here. Is it dying? No, but we are getting closer. So like I said, throughout the game, we're going to be getting a lot of these so-called uh, 
I want to say like more flashback sequences and obviously we went the wrong way. We kind of screwed up here. Uh, we do have that kind of restriction as to how far we can go uh, before the game yells at us and tells us we're going the wrong way. I love, I do love how it showed that we have our ghost ability there at the bottom corner here. Fighting in Yarikawa drove some this way. So it's the rebels' fault. We should feed them to this bear as punishment. We are not barbarians, Jin. So right now we do have some elements, like I said, from like games like The Witcher uh, here, where we can kind of track, uh, definitely, definitely track where, you know, we're going here. The bear stumbled here. Is it dying? That's a little bit different than The Witcher, though, where Geralt can actually see where they're going it with, uh, I guess, the scent. But this is more like, okay, we see the trail, we see the blood, let's just follow it. And it's kind of like that, but I'd like to pretend it is <laughs> pulling yes, inspiration from games alive. like that. Can I take the shot? Prove you can control your emotions. Then, perhaps. So like I said, we're, we're tracking this bear down. And this is kind of like, uh, I don't want to say it is like a lesson, but we're kind of getting this because of how we just killed that dude. Uh, like I said, a lot of the game uh, cycles around Jin's struggles uh, to between the honor and the, the sort of dishonor that we're going through with doing playing the game the way we're supposed to play the game with the ghost skills and everything like that. And it kind of blends together, and it's an interesting story. It's more of a psychological story to an extent blended in with the conflict that we have in the story. So it's an interior conflict, so to speak. I have no Cut idea where we're going, by the way. No, here he is. Be alive. This arrow should not have killed him. Look, Uncle. There's a gash in his side. Not from an arrow. From Yarikawa! Traitor! You would stab the stone in the back! Rosakai! Control yourself. We are not criminals like this man here. We are samurai. He tried to kill you! He must answer for this crime with his life. And look him in the eye. Teach him that samurai never acts out of anger or fear, and take his life with honor. When we fight, we face our enemy head on. And when we take their life, we look them in the eye with courage and respect. This is what makes us samurai. Only cowards strike from the shadows. Jin, what's wrong? Let's find your brother. We can't let them see us. Use all your senses. Think and move like a thief. It's kind of funny though, as we're playing the game, uh, since we have everything unlocked. Uh, Jin obviously having that internal struggle between doing the assassinations and all that stuff against, you know, the honor, and then we literally pick up and we just start kind of ganging everyone in the back and just killing them that way. It, 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 to me, like I said, it's, it's definitely more on the comical side. Uh, obviously, you know, it kind of takes away from that when you play that in New Game Plus, but there is that internal struggle where you want to follow your code of honor, but at the same point in time, you want to save your people. 
So that's the whole point of this game is, you know, obviously the Mongols are, we gotta stop the Mongols, so on and so forth. But the way we do it, where we kind of blend two different styles of, I don't want to say gameplay, but two different styles, like, uh, as the character, to do it. Uh, being sneaky, stealthy, like a thief, assassin, you know, so on and so forth, and then being the honorable samurai. Obviously, you know, there's going to be a lot of conflict, that internal conflict no, inside that, Jin, yeah. as well as between characters as well, and it's going to play out, obviously, you know, on the screen. Prisoner. Taka. Let's find out. No. So we're gonna just gank that guy in the back. And we're gonna make sure there's no one else around. That's what I'm doing right now. And we can actually, if you played Last of Us Part 2, uh, you can actually see things like that. If you tap, I think it was, we're tapping the touchpad as we're walking around. As long as we're crouched, we'll be able to see things in black and with the red outlines around enemies. So we're gonna free this dude, bro. And let's see what dude bro tells us. Need to go. We'll talk when it's safe. Come on. So now we gotta follow the winds here. That we can actually bring out the winds, and the winds will kind of give us an idea of where we're supposed to go. Since I am an idiot and have no idea where we're going, uh, more likely than not. So we gotta get out of here, and we're gonna be able to have a conversation with the dude. I obviously went the wrong way because I'm an idiot like that. <laughs> Let's get to the river. We'll be safe there. Are you with the Straw Hat Ronin? I was. Cut ties with them after they started running low on rations. Lord Shimmer has been captured, and I could use some extra swords to free him. Are you looking for work? No, but the other Straw Hats may be. Last I heard, they were hunting Mongols in Tsitsu Prefecture, by the coast near the Kishi grasslands. This way. We're looking for my brother, a blacksmith named Taka. Don't know him, but a lot of prisoners move through here. You said they were moving the slaves. Where? They mentioned Asimo Bay. And there was a blacksmith in the last group. Young man with a beard. From Yarikawa, maybe. You'd better be right. I hope you find your blacksmith. Taka's alive in Osmo Bay. The town is surrounded by walls. Rushing in without a plan will only put him in more danger. I have a friend who might be able to get us inside. Find him. The sooner we rescue Taka, the sooner we save my uncle. Jin. Taka will forge whatever tool you need as soon as he's free. But after that, we're leaving the island. You've seen what the Mongols are doing here. Lord Shimura can stop them. Stay. Help us fight for a home. Home is wherever Taka and I go. My friend lives in Asmo Prefecture, on the border with Tsutsu. I'll find you there. I know this wasn't easy. Going against your code. I did what I had to. Thank you. Lord Shimura. You deserve better than this. Convince your people to stop resisting, and you can walk free. Stop wasting my time. Kill me. Mm, you think you've lost everything. But your nephew is still alive. <laughs> my men control the roads. They build war camps near your towns. They see 
Everything. And they will find him. Lord Sakai will fight until his last breath. As will I. You love him. Just as you love your people. You're a father to them. Will you abandon your children? I won't make them your slaves. Get yeah, every once in a while we'll get a nice little uh I guess we'll call it a little cutscene, seeing how Lord Shimura is doing. I, I I gotta say though, when we accomplish certain major quests, we're gonna be able to to do that. So, like I said, each kind of quest is varies in length a bit. Also, it kind of acts like its own little episodic content. Now, we really need to put more charms in here, so we're gonna go through and I, I kind of equip charms, and we get the charms by going through uh, the shrines, which that in themselves they have their own little puzzles, so to speak, that we need to kind of solve um, and, you know, go through. And we also, I believe we get charms for doing the fox dens, but I'm not 100% sure. I think the actual shrines are more stronger charms, so we kind of, kind of have to make sure we equip each one. They all do little, you know, boosts. We don't get any actual, like, hardcore major boosts, and I gotta say, I love how some of the major charms... Uh, I recognize the names, and those are mainly because of Persona as a whole. We have Izanami and Izanaki both giving us uh, increases and stuff like that as major charms. Now, um, we did complete our first major quest in, in, in here. So, uh, And some of these quests do lead to other quests, such as Yuna saying that we have to go uh, free Taka from Azumo Bay, and that she has a friend that's going to help them in Azumo Bay. And... You know, so we have to go and do that. Obviously, there's other stuff that we have to go and do. But, you know, we're not going to rush through it. We're not going to speed through it. We're going to try to do everything we can. Aside from going from every little side, you know, quest or collecting every little thing, we don't have to actually do the complete collect-a-thon in an open-world title like this. I know that a lot of people are like, oh my god... New Game Plus means I have to go through and do all the collectathons again. And I, I gotta say, when I first played this, I didn't mind that. I actually enjoyed it, being able to run around and do everything in the game. But that's just me. I don't mind if it's done the way it is. I know, like, they follow the basics for essentially every single open world title like this. And, I, like I said, I enjoyed it because I love the game. Now, this is a great place for us to get ready to call it a, call it a day here. When we come back, next time I'm going to get further into the story here, we're going to expand more in the new game plus. We're going to slowly make our way through the game. We're not going to go, you know, speed rush through it, but we are going to play it at a brisk pace. We're going to make sure we do as much as we can. Once again, my name has been Angry Banjo, guys. Thank you so much for tuning in to our playthrough of uh, Ghost of Tsushima New Game Plus. Make sure you guys like, comment, and subscribe, and I will see you guys next time. We have more Ghost of Tsushima coming your way. Don't worry. We got plenty more of content coming here on the channel, so don't miss don't don't go anywhere. Farewell. Well.